Amen. Praise the Lord. Here we are again. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, just going to open it up to, uh, before we start here. For have anybody here that has any prayer requests, uh, bring them forth right now. And we'll pray for them stay before there. we get the service started. Anybody got a, uh, yeah, uh, Jay Dillon. Bobby Wells. Hey, anybody else you're gonna pray for? Uh, Prayer request Jay. for uh, James's brother. He just had a stroke. James from James and Lloyd. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's not here tonight. He's going to the hospital to get his brother. And I thought, I don't know his brother's name. And I, need, I need prayer for tomorrow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jim is speaking tomorrow, St. Augustine. Anybody else? Yeah, Mel. Mel? He, he too had a stroke and uh, has had complications from that. Oh. Uh, Anita? Uh, my family situation. Okay. My cousin Billy has early onset dementia. Mm. Need a secretary to pray on. <laughs> Patrick. Oh, my, my. No one I just uh, oh, that got all the glory for uh, my job. It, uh, it's got me working on several people at work for uh, salvation. Did have uh, my team leader did have a stroke. I don't know what's going on with strokes nowadays, but it seems, it seems to be a funny. Um, what was that? Who had a stroke? Uh, my team leader. Oh, team leader. You want to lift him up too? Yes, his name's Mike. Uh, he's recovering well. He's back to work, so that's good. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm working with him as far as uh, him recognizing. So you got a second chance. And uh, also, uh, my brother in law's brother, Jeff, had a stroke. And uh, he's, he's still got some paralysis from it. So he needs some more healing. That's your brother in law? My brother in law's brother. Bro, brother. Yeah, <laughs> Lord knows who he is. <coughs> Another hand back here. Uh, yes, Jim. Yes, I'd like <coughs> for Wild Bill and for uh, his financial situation to get better. And I like prayer for Kenny and I to get a new place to live. Our air conditioning don't work for about 95 degrees <coughs> every day and night. All right, everybody else? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Edward. I like to all minister to you prayer because I'm going through a very hard time. I mean, it's been homeless and everything. <coughs> and I don't know how much longer I can take this alone. Ed Edwin, right? Your name is Edwin, right? Yeah. JW. Anybody else for a prayer request here? Yeah, uh, Jill? 
prayer for your wife. Anybody else? Hey Ken, how you doing? Snuck in. <laughs> yeah, for our church, definitely. That's right. Definitely for the church. All right. Are we all set? Have we had everybody? Yeah. Yeah. See if I can do my, my chicken scratch up here. I'm trying to write real quick here. <laughs> uh, Heavenly Father. We come before your throne, you know, your word says we can come boldly to your throne because uh, of having Jesus as our Savior and Lord. And he ripped up the, that curtain and there's nothing stopping us from going right to you with our prayer requests, Lord. Uh, first of all, I want to lift up our church here, Lord, as we're going through uh, uh, changes here, Lord. I, I pray for your direction and, and uh, your blessings and as we go forward here with the this is your church, Lord Jesus, you know, and you're the one who's going to do it. And Lord, we just want to want your leading and uh, and your wisdom and, uh, and understanding to, to to keep it going, Lord. I want to lift up uh, Bobby Wells, Lord, as he's uh, with his cancer situation here, Lord. I don't know if he started treatments yet or not, Lord, but I just uh, pray that he be with the doctors as he goes in for treatment, Lord. And also with him, uh, uh, keep his spirits up. I uh, I uh, hear his spirit's pretty good uh, as he's going through this, Lord, and uh, just uh, lift up his wife as, as he's uh, going through this, too, and keep her strong. Uh, I lift up uh, James' brother that, uh, that suffered a stroke, and I know he's out, him and Lori went out to see him at the hospital uh, tonight, Lord. I just pray that, uh, uh, you know, you, you touch him, release, release your healing virtue, and, 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 and t touch him, Lord, and uh, start the healing process, and... Uh, Come out of there uh, better than when you came in, Lord. Uh, uh, lift up Big Jim for tomorrow, Lord, as he goes to St. Augustine and uh, speaking up there, Lord. I just pray that you give him the, the words to, that uh, you want him to bring forth, Lord, and the people there to be receptive receptive to, to what he has to say, Lord. Uh, uh, Mel, this other person, Mel, that had a stroke also, Lord. I just pray that uh, you be with him in, in the recovery and, and uh, Again, Jesus, you know, you, you bore the stripes on your back for healing of all sickness and diseases, Lord. I just pray you release your healing virtue to know right now. Uh, Nita and her family situation here is, uh, uh, you know the situation there that she's going through, Lord. And uh, uh, I, I just pray that you, you'll use her mind to be a, a witness, and, uh, Lord, and just uh, your spirit will guide her and bring forth the right words to, to witness to, to her family. And, uh, I, I just pray that they'll come to that you'll take out the stony hearts and put, put fleshy hearts in there, as you're saying in Ezekiel, Lord, that uh, so that uh, they'll receive they'll receive the word from uh, from uh, from you, Lord. <clears throat> I lift up uh, 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 chicken. Okay, Patrick has his job; he's giving glory for that, and and uh, Mike, his teamwork, had a stroke there. I just pray that he touched that. Touch him there. Uh, also, the, his brother-in-law's uh, brother Jeff had a stroke. Also, in the recovery, Lord, again, I just pray, uh, Jesus, that you release your uh, your healing uh, there. Uh, now I know it's Dugan. Yes, about uh, uh, is his brother uh, Billy there that uh, needs needs a touch, Lord. I just pray for for that. That uh, again, you release your healing uh, touch there. Uh, and uh, Jim. Uh, Jimmy Johnson here, Lord, that he, he still needs a place to, uh, to live, him and Candy, Lord. I just pray you open the door for, for a good place for him to, to have a home, Lord, and also uh, lift up a wild bill with his financial situations, Lord. I just pray that to, you release finances into, into, into his uh, life, Lord. Uh, Edwin here has come here as a homeless man, and he doesn't know how, you know, he, he, he doesn't want to be out there in the street. He wants a place to, to, to call home, Lord. I just pray you open the door for him to find a place, a place, Lord Jesus. Uh, JW with his praise report with the, the owner's uh, daughter dear, giving praise to Jesus, Lord. I just uh, pray that you you bless that that one. What she has said to this individual here, uh, Jill for herself, man, to lift her up and give her a, a good a good uh, a, a spirit to raise her spirit and uh, give her a spirit of joy in, in her in her Lord. 
uh, and uh, I lift up uh, each and every one of you here. You know, so a lot of us have unspoken requests and stuff. I know that uh, we all we all need we need prayer for certain. So I just pray that that uh, you'll reach out and touch the most urgent need of each individual here that they, they need right right now, Lord. That you you release you release that need into their life, Lord. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I lifted them up already, the buttons. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I do. We, we, uh, we got that information earlier. And here's Penny. This is uh, Frankie's wife, Penny. She's going to lead us in uh, worship tonight. Cool. Right. So everybody uh, just... Uh, Help her out. <laughs> and help us out. <laughs> Amen. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi Penny. 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 Your mic on. Am I on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I know you may not know the words to all these songs, but working on how we can share the words so that you'll be able to sing along in the future. Um, the words you don't know, just soak in them as we focus on amazing God that we're going to sing about. And uh, when you pick it up, join me in.
radios, computers, telephones, alarm clocks, the list goes on and on. How about our cell phones? <laughs> Everybody got a cell phone here tonight? All right, just a couple of us, right? Yeah. Anybody got a flip phone? If you got a flip phone, I'll give you a dollar. Just try it in Yeah. You got a flip phone? Oh my goodness, I owe you a dollar. All right. But we are totally dependent on power. How long will your cell phone run on battery power? One or two days? If it's new, it lasts for like three days, right? No, not even then. But like you get a maximum of two days out of it if you're lucky. Like if you don't listen to any songs and you don't listen to any YouTube videos, you don't watch anything, right? Then you might get two days worth of power. But regardless of how long your battery lasts, you still have to plug it back into the charger, right? Yep. What happens immediately when you unplug it from the charger? It doesn't die, but what? It starts losing power immediately. The same is true when we unplug from God and unplug from his word. Every Saturday here, or Sundays in some case, you go to church, right? And you get power back up, right? Yeah. I've actually heard people say that. Who's heard people say that? All right, yeah. I got to get my fill, man. I got to get power back up so I can go through the week. But see, if we're not plugging into the power source during the week, we're going to run on empty, right? Just like a cell phone, immediately when we walk out the door from church or from prayer meeting or from Bible study, we start to mentally disconnect from him. Right? Yeah. You awake? Yep. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> and when we mentally disconnect from him, we start to lose that power. Okay? Maybe like me, you're kind of like one of those old batteries mm-hmm. that will only hold power for so long, you know, and, and it will start to lose it quicker than it would. It did when it was brand new. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe like an old cell phone, your antenna's broken or your buttons stick. You know, but the beautiful thing is God will give us a brand new phone when we go to Him and renew our contract. <laughs> right? Amen. Let's turn to 1 John 1 9 tonight. 1 John 1 9. I'm going to look it up with you. That way I know how long it takes. <laughs> First John 1 John 1.9. So how do we renew our contract? How do, we, uh, how do we get this thing rolling? Well, 1 John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, when we have things affecting our battery power, right, when we have things affecting it, it's going to lose power quicker. So, plugging back into the power source and and going to Jesus, confessing our sins, is going to help us power back up. The Bible talks about power in many places, all right? In Jeremiah, you don't need to turn there, but Jeremiah 32, 17 says, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arms. There is nothing too hard for you. Ephesians 6, 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. In Philippians 4, 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
You catching on to what I'm talking about tonight? Yeah. yeah. How many of you, myself included, all right, try to go throughout the week and we, we're not reading our Bibles. You know, we, we, we all have great intentions, right? Maybe we even put the Bible out on the kitchen table. We're like, I'm going to read it every morning, yeah. right? Yeah. Just not today. <laughs> right? Today, I'll start tomorrow. Right? We have the greatest of intentions. Oh, right? We're not plugging into the power source. Or the only prayer we're saying during the week is when we're staring at the pizza. And we're like, Lord God, bless this food, amen. Right? And we're not we're not using the power. It's kind of like when you're at the airport, right? Anybody been to the airport in the last two years? All right. They have these areas now where you can plug in your cell phones. All right? It's right next to the smoker's room. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, but when you walk around, there's these power stations, right? And the power is right there. It's right there. If your phone is running low, you simply... Sit down, plug it in, and wait. But that's like us throughout the week. We're going through the, the day, and we see God's word, and we know that we have time to sit down and pray, and we're like, ah, not now. Right? And we walk right past the station. God says we can come boldly to his throne. We can call upon his name. We can ask for him to give us his power. And he wants to give it to us. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We say these things a lot to ourselves and to other people. You know, brother, for all things work together for good. Amen. <laughs> Right? But we're neglecting the power source. See, because we can say all these great verses and we can talk and, hey, brother, I'm praying for you. You know, and all this good stuff. But if we're not going to God and we're not asking him, that's what prayer is. Asking. And that's how we, we build that fellowship with God. Okay? A lot of times, it's like you have a friend, right? And he or she, you see him, you're like, hey, man, it's good to meet you. So glad you're here. You know, we wear the same clothes. Pretty cool. You know, we're all uh, similar to one another. And then we don't talk to him for like three months. And then we expect that, you know, the fellowship between us is going to be nice and tight. Hey, man, can I borrow your lawnmower? Uh, no, I haven't seen you in three months, right? Now, the beautiful thing about God is he, he knows the very hairs on our head, as Scripture says. He knows us intimately. And we can come to him at any point, plug back into that power, and receive God's power. But what do we need the power for anyway? I mean, our society is free of sin, and <laughs> you know, there's nothing that we need to worry about out there, right? Everybody's a good person, right? You don't believe me? It's like we're tempted everywhere we go. We get on the internet. Every time we turn on the TV, after all, the Bible is just a book of old stories that don't apply today, right? It's not like we're faced with the things the Bible tells us about in Galatians 5. Let's turn to Galatians 5. I mean, everybody's our friend, right? Turn it in. I promise. 
us. Galatians 5. And we're going to start in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. We don't face that out there, right? I mean, I'm guessing if I walked from the bridge all the way down 92 to Tomoka Farms Road, I could probably see a, at least half of those. <laughs> right? At least. <laughs> We're so inundated with this stuff that we become <laughs> desensitized to it. Mm-hmm. You know what desensitized means? Yes. It means yeah. that you see something so much that you're numb to it. Right? And our world is filled with these things today. And we're becoming desensitized to it. The problem is when we don't plug into the power source, we try to fight these things on our own. We try to resist sin and temptation just by just by staying away from it. Right? If you stay away from it, you won't have any problems. We can stop anytime we want to, right? Hmm. We can do it all by willpower. If our willpower is strong enough, we can stop it. You and I both know that that's garbage, right? That's right. It's a lot like putting your Bible on the table and saying, I'm going to read that every morning. All right? We know it's not going to happen unless we make it purposeful in our lives. Did you know that the devil knows what each one of us is tempted by? Did you know that? And you know how he knows? We tell him. That's exactly right. We're like, I'm going to look at this until you see it. Now you know what I'm tempted by. Right? That's what's amazing is, is he knows what we're tempted by because of the things we do. And regardless of how much we try to fix things on our own, we're basically trying to recharge our cell phone without plugging in to the power of God, right? Romans 8.5 says, For those who live according to the flesh, Set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Here's a great thing. Our Father in Heaven will give us the power to defend against sin and temptation through His Spirit. It's through His Spirit we came to God. That's some serious power. If I told you about the stuff I used to do compared to the stuff I do now, you know, it's through the power of his spirit that he's changed me. That's incredible. Amen, Amen Jim? Right. Amen. It's, it's amazing to think about that. And yet we ignore that power because we can take it, right? I got it. <laughs> if you're a believer, you have the Holy Spirit living inside you. He dwells within you. Jesus called him the great comforter. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? You are bought with a price. He's inside of us. And a lot of times, you ever, you ever have somebody visit and your house is trash? Maybe they just show up, right? They feel so bad, they start cleaning up. <laughs> I 
that's what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. He comes inside and he helps to clean up our mess. He gives us power to get rid of those things. Even though we have this unlimited power source living inside of us, we still try to do it our own. We quench his power by not reading God's word and by failing to pray. You know, we have a direct communication line to God. A direct communication line. Nobody has to pray for us. We can pray for ourselves. Because we have the Spirit of God that's leading us through it. And we have the great mediator that's between us and God. And that's the man Christ Jesus. Doing these two simple things every day will plug us into God's power. And will help us to focus on what his desire is for our lives. If we're not plugging into the power source... We're easily looking at what our desires are for our lives, right? I know that for a fact. Every time I go past a car dealership. <laughs> right? The truck store, you got it. Don't even get me started on the Harley story. That's a whole other story. I can tell you this. Before I became a Christian, I never wanted anything to do with God. The things of God. After all, how can I be happy following God's plan for my life? He's got too many rules. (laughs) I I used to want to get a t-shirt that said, how can I be a Christian without being weird? All of you resemble that remark, just so you know. (laughs) But, But the reality is he changes our hearts. And that is weird. To the outside world. When they look at us, they see something and they can't explain it. They're like, what is up with that? This is how they will know you are my disciples for the love that you have for one another. Why do they love each other? Look at that guy. He's not lovable. Too many times we think that if we just push it away and we just try really hard throughout the week, we can make it till Sunday without plugging in the power source. Maybe I can just save a little bit of battery power. You know, you guys ever had your cell phone and like there's 5% battery power left? Right? You're like, you dim it down. You're like, okay, if I put it on night mode, right? And I get rid of all my email. Get rid of all my email. No songs. Don't send me texts. Nobody send me texts. Right? I'm not checking Facebook. Maybe I'll have battery power all the way home. Right? And that's kind of what we do during the week. When the power source is right there for us. 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride in possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. So when we see these things out there and we're believers, we know that they're not of God. But yet we're drawn to them without plugging into the power source. We're going to have a tough fight ahead. Even though the advertisements are convincing, the ways of the world will not bring us happiness. And a lot of you have found that out, right? I know I did. Because I tried most of it. All right? I was like, if I only had that. (laughs) Once I meet her, right? Once I do this, everything's going to be great. Each one of us has a God-shaped hole inside of us, okay? And we can try to fill it with all kinds of stuff. But unless God is there, unless the Holy Spirit is filling that void, we'll never feel content. We won't have joy. 
Colossians 3, 2 says, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. That's hard to do. But when we're plugging into the power source, when we're praying, when we're when we're singing Christian songs, when we're reading our Bible, we start to pay attention more on what God wants than on what we want. Right? And some of our troubles don't see so, seem so troubling. Getting out of the world and their way of thinking by reading the Bible and praying will renew our minds and will allow us to focus on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I talked about this in uh, in our Bible study on Wednesday. I don't know why I'm using the same example, but when you grow a fruit tree, right? Let's say let's say you're going to grow a grapefruit tree, right? You put it in your yard and you water it and you you put fertilizer on it and it grows, right? And once it starts producing grapefruit, it won't stop, right? Because that tree's purpose is to create grapefruit. And I believe that's why, why God gives us the, the fruit of the Spirit as the example of how things in our life should be the fruit because we should be producing these things as believers but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control wow It's a big difference, isn't it? I can guarantee if I walk from the bridge all the way down to Tomoka Farms, I won't see half of those. (laughs) Because we're caught up in the world. We're caught up in the way the world thinks. And as we're living our lives throughout the week, we need to plug into the power source. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, Rightly dividing the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy. Okay? And that means we're to study scripture so that we can tell what's right and what's wrong. If your cell phone was always plugged in to a never-failing power source, you'd never have to worry about losing power, right? As we leave tonight... I want us to focus on learning to plug into God throughout the week. Let's make a concerted effort to pray, and I'll do this too, to pray and to read our Bibles each and every day. And by doing that, we can remain plugged into God. Let's pray. Amen. Father God, we praise you for this evening and for your love again. I just pray, Lord, that you would help us and guide us to keep you as the power source in our lives. And Lord, not to get focused on the things of the world. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Praise God. I I guess you guys would all know, but I don't know what all things are on the piano over there. No price for that. Uh, Heavenly Father God, we just thank you for the people that are giving, for uh, bringing their tithes and offering into our church here, Lord Jesus. I just ask that uh, the people that give, that you uh, multiply it back to them to meet their needs, Lord. And uh, for the people that are not un- that are unable to give, Lord, that uh, you'll open resources for them to, to, that they'll be able to give in the, in the future. And whatever need they have in their life, that you would fulfill it, Lord. And we, we pray that uh, as we receive offerings and tithes, that you lead us and guide us to, to use the offering and tithes for the furthering of your kingdom. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.